The HP Spectre X360 is a beautifully designed laptop with good specifications that before got me through all of my schoolwork involving war processing, photo editing, light gaming, and even light video editing. Here I introduce my previous daily driver, the HP Spectre X360 Skylake Edition. And this laptop is made entirely out of a silver aluminum with stainless steel on the side, weighing only 3.2 pounds. This design makes this machine look very elegant, which is what initially caught my eye. On the right, we have an audio jack, two USB 3.0 ports, one HDMI port, mini display port, volume rocker, and a Windows button. On the left, we have power in, heating vents, one USB 3.0 port, a power button, and an SD card slot. If you watched my Razer Blade 14 review, you will know that the one finger hinge was an appreciated feature. The HP Spectre doesn't have that feature because it's a 2-in-1 device. The hinge is not supposed to be so robust, so naturally it'll require more than just one finger to open. This machine comes with a 1920x1080 IPS resolution screen that displays very vivid colors. This screen also supports the HP stylus, which I would use a lot for drawing on screen. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that display is not usable outside because the display is very glossy and the screen itself doesn't get very bright, so keep that in mind. Inside, you get a 6th generation Intel Core i7 processor, dual core with 2.6 GHz, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, Intel HD Graphics 520, and a 256GB solid state drive. The B&O branded speakers are okay. They are bottom facing which gets in the way of the speakers getting as loud as they could since they do offer good sound, but they are not loud to begin with. Speakers are at their best when the laptop is in presentation mode. The webcam will get the job done. It's fine, though not particularly crisp like the Blade 14. It still gives good enough picture quality. I'm personally satisfied with it, but then again, I'm not obsessed with how dense the pixels are in my video call. The keyboard is pretty good. I quickly managed to start typing very fast, and it's this tactile experience that makes it so enjoyable if you need to type a lot. One of my favorite laptop keyboards, just because it does let you get up to speed very quickly. Love it. The trackpad is bigger than my iPhone SE. It's a pretty large trackpad and it is pretty nice, but it doesn't feel so responsive. It feels premium, but it still is a little slow. Maybe that's just something I can fix in trackpad sensitivity settings, but this is how I see it. Still, pretty solid trackpad. Using this laptop is a treat. It's very portable, which made it easy for me to carry it to school without breaking my back. This laptop also comes with a sleeve, which on top of the amazing build quality of this machine will add an extra layer of protection. So good on ya, HP. I use the HP stylus for drawing, as it has a very nice pressure sensitivity and becomes very easy to pair with the Spectre. Here's a sample drawing of my character, Douglas Venedictov, with the Spectre, in comparison to a Wacom drawing tablet. Now the drawing tablet is obviously better if you're looking for the most portable solution out there, though, then the HP Spectre stylus is still a very good option. Now, this is not a gaming laptop for sure, but I was still able to get some games to be playable on this machine, as I do at least once did travel a lot with it. This laptop can handle lighter titles pretty well, but it is not meant for playing any AAA titles. Please do keep that in mind. For CSGO, I had to reduce the resolution to 720p, medium settings if I wanted to enjoy playing the game. I was able to manage anywhere between 40 to 50 frames per second. These reductions I found to be necessary so I could have a playable experience. With Paragon, I did bring settings down to low if I wanted to play in 1080p. This averages out to about 40 frames per second, which isn't the worst experience. But even then, since the laptop was getting very hot, it began to thermal throttle, which is why I got these results. League of Legends was a different story. I was able to get a solid 60 frames per second even on high settings, 1080p, which made for a very smooth gameplay. So that was a pretty enjoyable experience. Video editing in Adobe Premiere didn't always work out for me. If I wanted to edit anything in 1080p, I was expecting a lot of stuttering, which is exactly what I got. Having playback to 720p, however, makes for a much better editing experience. 8GB of RAM did an okay job with editing. I found myself getting to 100% RAM and CPU usage when editing my videos for Civil Darkness. And unfortunately, even having had the laptop blue screen on me. However, if you were to get, for instance, the 16GB model, 
you wouldn't run into as many issues as I did. So I strongly recommend it if you're looking for a computer for editing any sort of videos and are in a budget but still want something very lightweight. This laptop usually stays relatively cool, even when video editing, surprisingly. But when it came to gaming, this machine did get very hot. Not as hot as a Blade 14, but at least manages to stay quiet even under load. I wouldn't say the heat is something to be concerned about. It has ventilation on the side of the laptop and at the bottom of it, so it has a lot of spots where it can manage heat. I would use this laptop with the HP Stylus for drawing and the Microsoft Surface Mouse as I was going for the most lightweight setup possible. The mouse is very nice for regular use, but for gaming, it just wasn't sensitive enough. Would just recommend for web browsing or if you just want a simple mouse on the side. I don't really have any real complaints about this laptop. The only complaints would probably be that the display is not as bright as it could be, so I can only use it indoors and that the trackpad isn't as responsive as I'd hoped. Other than that, it is a very good product, so I don't really have any real complaints about it, I'm just very satisfied. In conclusion, this laptop is a properly powered machine for Photoshop and word processing, even light gaming. It is very portable and really well built, which makes it feel really sturdy, and the design makes the laptop look astonishingly beautiful in every way. This laptop is very good for artists as well because of its stylus support. While I use it as a daily driver, it was a really great machine to have. Now, however, I have moved on to needing more processing and graphical power, which is why I'm leaving it behind. Otherwise, I strongly recommend it if your computing needs are fairly moderate. For everything I mentioned and featured in this video, I will be leaving links in the description. This has been Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Enjoy!